swarms of autonomous drones. It sounds like science fiction, but they are very real. Imagine hundreds, perhaps even thousands of them. Small, agile, and deadly, sharing data between them, making tactical decisions on their own, and executing attacks with lightning speed. We are living now in the age of the drone swarm. They buzz overhead, like lethal hornets. They operate with a terrifying efficiency. They watch for targets with unblinking eyes, and then descend for the kill. Drones are becoming smaller, lighter, and even more lethal. Some say the age of the main battle tank is over. Others insist tanks will still be needed. It's a debate that has rattled the defense establishment. Modern war has become a cross between all quiet on the Western Front and Blade Runner. War is now like a massive multiplayer video game, but it is one in which the characters you kill cannot respawn. And now, unleash the ultimate technological power, autonomy. The modern battlefield is not to be won by boots on the ground. Instead, it is fought in a terrifying ballet of autonomous machines, moving with a collective intelligence that challenges our very understanding of warfare. The goal now is the massing of these drones. Vast swarms operated by edge computing networks in the cloud. They communicate with each other, forming a collective mind. This distributed intelligence means that even if individual drones are destroyed, the swarm continues to operate, adapting and retasking its remaining units. They can create diversion and overwhelm defenses. The tactical implications are staggering. Harnessing and controlling this intelligent power could one day become a challenge, one with major systemic risks. But NATO and the West are adapting. Member nations are getting up to speed as experience and capabilities with drone warfare grows. The latest systems are getting larger and more advanced, with expanded range and bigger payloads. Military-grade drones can cost as little as $10,000, and smaller, off-the-shelf commercial varieties are just a few thousand. By contrast, a single modern main battle tank can cost upwards of 10 million. This massive disparity means that drone swarms are far more economical. The ease of use is another factor. Anyone can learn how to fly, arm and deploy a drone using a simple remote control console. Munitions can even be fashioned in the field. An explosive charge can be a relatively lightweight payload. Copies, 18 Sierra Tango Delta, 9 or 1, 2. 3, 2, 1, currently at 8 knots. Copy, rescued on forward. Sorry about that. Who's coming here? I was in there. On it.
These smaller drones are particularly effective for what's known as reconnaissance in force, or RIF. They're sent out to force the enemy to reveal their positions. Then, after the mission, they dutifully return to their masters. Defending against a drone swarm is a monumental challenge. Traditional anti-aircraft systems are designed for larger targets that come in faster. A swarm, however, presents hundreds of small, evasive threats. But for every threat there is a countermeasure. The latest UAVs are designed to defend against these swarms. In other words, drones that hunt and kill enemy drones literally shooting them out of the sky. Some of these are kinetic interceptors, designed to literally crash into enemy drones before they reach their targets. These battles between autonomous drones will only be lightly managed by humans, if at all. They can be observed from far away, in safe locations halfway around the globe, tethered only by a satellite data connection. But now that it is obvious to all where the future is headed, what role will heavy armoured forces play in this new era? More to the point, what is the future of the main battle tank, and does it even have a future? To answer the question fully, we have to consider a number of factors. The mighty M1 Abrams tank. This 60-ton beast is seen here during exercises in Norway. Its crew learns how to drift on top of the solid ice of a frozen lake. It is a sight to behold. For over a century, the tank has been the undisputed king of the battlefield a symbol of brute force, armoured might, and overwhelming offensive power. But one wonders if it is now an obsolete relic, destined for the scrapyard of military history. The threats are undeniable. A single drone can exploit the thinner top armour of a tank. A coordinated swarm can overwhelm active protection systems. A tank that costs tens of millions of dollars can be destroyed by a weapon that cost mere thousands. The traditional advantages of the tank, its heavy armour, its formidable firepower suddenly seem less absolute. Its mobility, while impressive for its size, is still limited compared to the agility of a drone. Its crew, highly trained and invaluable, are now inside a potentially vulnerable metal coffin, a target beacon for a relentless, intelligent drone swarm. Some argue that the age of the main battle tank is drawing to a close that its high cost and growing vulnerability make it an unsustainable asset. Others argue that the tank's raw power, its ability to take and hold terrain, to deliver devastating direct fire, and to protect ground forces, remains irreplaceable. But this drone revolution has now raised a new question. What is to become of the thousands of armored vehicles in US inventory? The US maintains a vast archipelago of storage yards and heavy infrastructure to maintain, move and deliver armor anywhere in the world that it may one day be needed. Thousands upon thousands are kept in vast storage yards, like this one here, at the Sierra Army Depot. This facility sits on a dry lake bed at the foot of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Its inventory is staggering. A vast network of rail and sea links connects these storage facilities with links all across the globe. The US Army even operates its own rail system. 
The scale of this network is awe-inspiring, but it comes at a cost to taxpayers. Does the level of investment in these systems need to be changed? What is clear is that how you spend will become more important than how much you spend, with real implications for strategists, governments and defence budgets. Whatever policy choices are made, one thing is clear. These tiny little machines in the sky, cheap, ubiquitous and deadly, have changed warfare, and maybe even the fate of nations, forever. If you'd like more videos like this one, be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let us know. We'd love to read your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to our channel for further episodes. Thanks for watching.